So what the hell are we gonna do? About Queen Bitch and all her spooky little bitches? Poison sounds nice. Shockingly, all books on poison disappeared from the Royal Library right around the time they arrived. They're armed, they're smart, they're multitudinous, they are invisible to the guard. When you put it that way. What if they know about this in Loria? If I send Idri a message... Worst case, he comes here, you look at him naked and cheer up a little. How dare you make me sound that shallow. Welcome back to the zoo. We've got the gorgeous Summer Michelle from Sci-Fi's The Magician. Ooh, yes. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to the zoo, darling. Thank Welcome. you. Thanks Are you ready me. to be locked up in the cage with us? I am. Yeah? I'm ready for this. Whoa. Yes. Okay, at the count of three. One, two, three. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, okay. gosh. That was very good. Okay, Battle. first the zoo. <laughs> Honey, for the fans of the show, yes. where's the eye patch? Um, I, I don't leave the house in the eye, in the eye patch all the time. <laughs> I thought Actually, you were going to say, I never leave home without it. Yeah, right. No, um, wow, yeah, I was just talking about that. I wore an eye patch all season, mm -hmm. so it was, it was funny. Is it annoying? I mean, it, it definitely had its moments of annoyance, for sure, but it also really helped me evolve as a performer and helped me, you know, sort of think about my body more and, and how do I use my physical space, okay. and because you can't always rely on both of your eyes, and, oh. you know, it's also a very dark show, so Ooh, a lot yeah. of times we can't see you. It's like Harry Potter after dark. After dark, yeah. that is a great way of putting it. Yeah. Well, half the work for the yeah. makeup artists. So yeah. Yeah. She's yeah, happy. that's true. <laughs> Honestly, I think they were more annoyed about it than I was because they were the ones who had to watch continuity because yeah, the strap of the true. eye really? patch. Yeah. yeah, and then when I would move my forehead, the eye pouch would move. Don't express yourself so much with uh, your face. Uh, yeah. But be, you know, before you tell us more about the show, show I'm interested in, in the lighting because yeah. I, I'm, just, I'm starting to get obsessed with, with lighting, especially with yeah. shows and movies that are darkly lit. Right. Uh, on set, though, do you notice it? Because yes. Yeah? Oh, yeah, it gives it so much atmosphere and so much more drama. Is it romantic? We need to start making this darker. Hey, Daniel's the director yeah. in the control room. Daniel, we want to do, like, shadows and stuff. Super oh. moody. Okay, good. <laughs> oh, we can have shadow dancers, too. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. That would be so fun to do the shadow stuff here. Well, tell us about the show and tell us about your character. Yeah. The show, I like how you put it, Harry Hi. Potter after dark. <laughs> yeah. um, no, but a lot of people have... Uh, you know, likened us to a more adult version of Harry Potter. We're based on a series of books uh, called The Magicians by Lev Grossman. And it's about Quentin Coldwater, a, a young man who is admitted into a magical school called Breakbills and meets all of these charismatic and fun and kooky and, and just different characters when he's at the school. And they form these friendships, and not all the time, you know, friendships. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, not everyone likes each other on the show. And some Magicians, you know how they are. They're so yeah. competitive. <laughs> There's some conflicks. <laughs> Who's gonna lie to you? Be able to tell, but it's true. They are <laughs> the magician. Wow. Yeah. They well, at least in this, you know, <laughs> environment. Yeah. yeah. You're so sweet. Wow. Okay. Okay. And tell um, us about your character. Like, yeah, like my you. character oh. is Margot, and you know, you you sort of meet her, and she's just uh, kind of a mean girl. Mm. Um, you, you know, there's there's she's definitely seems surface when you first meet her, and by season two, it's sort of you know her layers are sort of peeled back, and she's you know basically a uh, politician wow. <laughs> by season two she becomes wow. queen of the magical world fillery by accident now do these magicians um uh, is it kind of like the x-men where they all have like their own powers or, or, or kind of magic they stick to they do so For what's sure. what's your character yeah i'm a physical kid so I Whoa. can affect the physical environment. Can so you do that in real life too? No, no unfortunately. <laughs> I love that I wish, power. I'm actually the least skilled when it comes to like practical magic tricks. Gotcha. The entire but cast. then there's the mental, <laughs> right? The mentalism. Exactly. The mental kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, let's be real, honey. Sometimes the things that you say on this show. Yeah, yeah. They no just, filter. Yeah, no filter. Yeah. You know, do you just sometimes read the script and you're like, 
I just want this bitch to get slapped for everything she said. I love Dennis, it. why can't only you get away with saying that? I relish all of the crazy stuff I get to say. <laughs> um, I'm, I can be pretty shy in my own life. Okay. Um, so playing Margot is like this chance to be this like larger than life yeah. character. That's why you're an actor at the end yeah, of the day. Yeah, exactly. It's it's fun. Um, so I, I do actually have fun with a lot of the crazy stuff that I say. <laughs> Wait, you said that this character has helped you become more outspoken. And she has. Is there yeah. a like a, a personal situation that you can tell us about where you this character has helped you ignite that fire and you know speak up for yourself therapy in a time yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I don't know in therapy no um, <laughs> I, I can't think of like a personal situation but I would say just in my my acting and my my confidence on set and and how I carry myself on camera has has really changed and evolved because there's no way of, of sort of faking that sort of confidence yeah. that Margot has. Yeah. You kind of have to become that. And so after three years of pretending, it's sort of catching up to reality. Putting in yeah, you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I, you know, in one of the interviews that I was reading, yeah. you talked about, you know, being here in LA and going through a dry spell where you weren't even like right. working and whatnot. Yeah. And do you think you're proving people wrong with this character because it's yeah. been such a hit? Oh, for so many reasons, I feel like I'm proving people wrong. I mean, I, I, you know, I've always wanted to play somebody like Margot, somebody mm -hmm. charismatic, and you know, like I've talked about in several interviews, emancipated of certain ethnic stereotypes that are applied to, right. to women yeah. like me. Well, especially us people of color, you yes, know? Yes, exactly. We're just pigeonholed sometimes in certain yeah. roles or yeah. whatnot, you know? Yeah, and Margot's not that right. at all. So, so, Do we know a little bit about her ethnic background or where her family's from? Or is it just all in this magical world It's kind where... of like doesn't even matter. Right. And that's what I love about it, too. I, I love how the writers have, have sort of handled that. It's not even really brought up. I okay. mean, I would love to explore <clears throat> more of that right. one day, and I hope, hope, hope uh. next season some of that is explored explore some of her backstory and how she got to be, you know, who she is. Right. I mean, who are now, these people that made her? <laughs> on, on that note that you were talking about, you know, the character and no. how, you know, you embodied her and stuff, you also dealt with, um, not racism, but yeah. discrimination when you moved to San Diego. Yeah. So yeah. How, how was that experience for you and how mm -hmm. can you, how did you transform it? Right. into today, because, I mean, it obviously affected you. Right. When I moved to the U.S., it was pretty soon after 9-11. From where? From the Middle East. Okay. So, my, you know, my father's Saudi Arabian, and I grew up in the Persian Gulf, and, um, you know, I... I was thrown into the public school and I had always gone to very small schools and at that time after 9-11 all anybody was talking about was the terrorists and you know, the Middle East, the Middle Osama East. Bin Laden yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah, and you know, you we were being framed in, in a very negative light pretty wow. consistently by the media. If you remember those days, it was very different. Um, so, you know, kids will be kids and... and you know, I'm sure there are lovely people who have grown up to be like mindful now. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, there there was some bullying about where I had come from, for and sure. And then you you be, you started doing homeschooling. I did. Um, not because of that. Okay. Um, more because my career had begun to sort of okay. take off in the sense that I was I was going to auditions more regularly, and you know, driving from San Diego to Los Angeles was getting more difficult to okay. make it to so it classes. Just easier, it right. was just easier at that point. My mom's a teacher; she's an oh, educator, wow. so that was convenient. But yeah. now, now, yeah, now they all see where you are, and you're letting them know, hey, you right. can catch me on the magicians. Exactly. Hey, 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 hey